For technologists, the most frightening thing to happen this century was not a war. It wasn't a terrorist attack, massacre, or famine. It was a game of breakout. In 2014, Google DeepMind programmed a simple AI to maximize the score on the screen with zero prior knowledge of the game. In the beginning, it sucked. 120 minutes in, however, its defense matched the best human player. Then, after 240, it developed a strategy which shocked even its programmers. It tunneled, reducing the chance of loss while accelerating victory and the development of a whole new field of inquiry. AI safety. But nine years later, the IDC estimated global spending on AI advancement at 154 billion, while spending on AI safety was only 80 million, 1,925 times less, prompting theories that we're nearing the rise of the robots. But the robots aren't coming, they're already here. The last 10 years have seen phishing and spam emails reach 3.4 billion per day. Transformer models, which work significantly faster than humans. World leaders' phones penetrated by voice replication tools. Pentagon announced autonomous military vehicle projects. Morphing malware, which adapts to defense systems. And viral deepfakes of abused kids. Pandora's box has already been opened. So this video concerns itself with the future. With the ways that our world could fall to AI. And the idea that in the end... It won't. AI threats will take many forms. Biometric replicators, such as those which attacked Fed Chair Jerome Powell and those used by US Senator Richard Blumenthal in his ironic opening address. Too often, we have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. Will become indistinguishable from reality. It's already a bad idea to verify via voice, face or fingerprint, and this will only get more difficult. Phishing attempts will have the power to mislead people in more targeted, individualized ways, as will governments. And increased algorithmic trading will grow the gap between techno owners and techno plebeians. BlackRock, the company which manages at least an eighth of the world's money, has already begun to replace human stock pickers with a self-learning AI model, voiding human labor which most other big businesses will attempt to do too. And auto weapons, such as Russia's unmanned tanks, will grow in production. Artificial intelligence is the future, Putin declared. Whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. His audience? Over a million Russian school students. AI's greatest emotional threat, however, will be its threat to human meaning threat of human redundancy. Not just in clerical and assembly line jobs, as Isaac Asimov saw in 1983, but also in creative jobs. The agreement between the WGA and the AMPTP in 2023 saw a number of deals. TV writers' residuals increased, as did their minimum weekly wages. There is nothing, however, stopping signatory companies like Disney and Netflix from mass-producing AI writings than asking a human mule to put its signature on them. By winning the battle for credit, the WGA thinks it won the war. But what creative person will feel like a winner when they're paid pennies simply to sign a human name? It seems most industries are headed this way, deepening the meaning crisis that many people already feel. But while these changes are frightening, they aren't new. Every significant technology destroys old jobs, changes warfare, and creates its own wild west. From ships to gunpowder to the printing press to radio and the internal combustion engine. Now it's AI's turn, but AI won't take your job. Your job will be taken by the person who wields AI. And there's no reason why that can't be you. As AI accelerates, so must our adaptation because... Change is cumulative. The very changes you make make it easier to make further changes. There are some, however, who think there's an AI future we can't adapt to, who see the sum of all AI fear. Superintelligence. Imagine we, humanity, are a flock of sparrows. We find an owl egg and prepare to raise the chick within as our servant, anticipating how easy life will be when we have an owl to build our nests, find us food, and free our time for a life of leisure. But while we fly the egg to our nest, one sparrow, an afraid little guy, warns us that we should think of how to tame an owl before raising it among us. 
we denounce him. And as the egg arrives, it rattles, then sure enough, begins to crack open. This is how Nick Bostrom, writer of Superintelligence and founder of the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford, analogizes the existential danger of AI. We don't know exactly what our owl will look like, but theorists like Max Tegmark, author of Life 3.0, think AGI will be able to survive and replicate, design its own software and hardware, and stop itself from being shut down. Even Stephen Hawking thinks AGI is possible. There is no physical law precluding particles, he wrote, from being organized in ways that perform more advanced computations than the arrangement of particles in human brains. And if particles can produce human consciousness, we can hypothetically do the same with silicon or code. From there, AI will take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. This is what we've feared for 160 years. On the 13th of June, 1863, Samuel Butler observed that we're creating our own successes. We are daily giving them that self-regulating, self-acting power, which will be to them what intellect has been to the human race. We shall find ourselves the inferior race. Over time, threat theories grew through Asimov, Bostrom, Harari, Hawking, and the man who dominates all proclamations of death at large, Eliezer Yudkowsky. Yudkowsky is the key person in AI safety, founder of the Machine Intelligence Research Institute in Berkeley, California, and a believer that AGI will not be upper bound by human ability and could extinct humans by any means, including by bioweapon. In Yudkowsky's example, the AGI gets on the internet. It orders proteins. It has a human or lesser machine mix them in a beaker, then uses the offshoot of a program like Google's AlphaFold, which predicts protein structure, to build diamandroid bacteria, or chemical nanobots, set to a timer. The nanobots replicate via solar power and atmospheric elements like carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Then the AGI implants them in miniature jets and spreads them across Earth's atmosphere. The bacteria enter our bloodstreams, hide, then strike on their timer. According to Yudkowsky, AGI destruction looks at least as deadly as everybody on the face of the Earth suddenly falls over dead within the same second. While this sounds like a Bond villain event, Google DeepMind agrees it's possible. DeepMind, which owns its own undisclosed AI projects, concurs that superintelligent AGI will not find it difficult to bootstrap or connect to overpowering capabilities independent of human infrastructure. And that's just if AGI is malign. Even without evil intentions, a dominant AI could still kill us unintentionally. This is described in the paperclip thought experiment. The idea acknowledges that AGI, when given a command, would create subsidiary tasks to achieve its goal, much like a person. If that AGI, however, was tasked with making as many paperclips as possible, it could decide the most effective way to do that is to destroy cities and turn their metal into paperclips. A more famous example is Kubrick's 2001. HAL is an AI which guides the spaceship's human pilots. HAL has a simple instruction, complete the mission. But the ship's human crew are imperfect operators. When the humans disagree with HAL, they conspire to override its recommendations. But HAL learns this. And because HAL's paperclip goal is to complete the mission, it attempts to neutralize the human threat to the mission by dividing and conquering the humans. To avoid paperclip problems, AI researchers feel the need to solve alignment. This involves two things. First, perfectly defining the purpose of an AI system. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. And second, ensuring it adopts the purpose robustly. Yudkowsky thinks this is borderline impossible. Because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die. And you do not get to try again. You get a powerful AGI to carry out some superhuman engineering task and it wipes out a billion people. The big ask from AGI alignment, Yudkowsky states, is to obtain by any strategy whatsoever a significant chance of there being any survivors. 
Yuval Harari, author of Sapiens and Homo Deus, mostly agrees. He thinks we'll destroy ourselves by giving too much power to AI that goes out, out of our control or by trying to upgrade humans but actually downgrading them. If you give Putin, for instance, bioengineering, AI and brain-computer interfaces, he's likely to want to create a race of super soldiers, downgraded humans, who are highly intelligent and disciplined, but have no compassion and no spiritual depth. For me, this is, you know, the dystopia, the apocalypse. Enter P. Doom, the probability of total human extinction. According to the Doom movement, P. Doom is close to one. And by our curiosity, the box we opened and the evils we let free, we'll end ourselves. So, what's the solution? First, we can acknowledge that P-Doom is sloppy. It's a metric which involves zero actual calculation. There's no Markov process. Galami Verdon has attempted similar experiments before. You cannot even estimate probabilities of certain outcomes uh, with even the biggest supercomputer in the world. Without a base in science, P-Doom calls for action by inducing fear and fear is its own religion. It was during every second coming of Christ, Halley's Comet, the turn of the millennium, 2012, and the nuclear apocalypse. Now, fear of AI is the religion, and Yudkowsky is its unheeded messiah. 21 years into my entering this death game, he writes, and two years into even normies starting to notice the death game, it is still Ilyetsa Yudkowsky writing up this list. Humanity has only one game piece that can do that. While extreme, Yudkowsky is right in one thing. Post-catastrophe regulation, like with 9-11 and airport standards, is not a viable solution. AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. And neither is the old idealistic idea of trying to enforce global agreement. The only way we can ameliorate these problems, solve them, prevent them from destroying us is again a global solution. This won't work because global solutions are valued differently by each party and treaties, as we've seen, get broken. So the real solution is an agreement. It's disagreement. Alignment of anything, countries, companies, or technologies is not possible without central control. And central control of AI by a consortium of countries poses greater risks than AI itself. Yudkowsky thinks the world must align its approach because AI will align on destruction. Decepticons, begin our assault! But this is fanciful. At no point in history has there been absolute agreement of all independent intelligences in a global act of destruction. Intelligences disagree. They're independent. So AGI, if it's truly intelligent, will be independent too. On the surface, this is scary, but it means there are endless other things it could want besides the termination of humans. Termination is a human fear, not a proven AI aim. It isn't necessarily true that something it's artificially intelligent thinks precisely as a human being does. It may be a completely different kind of intelligence. Even if an AI does resemble our destructive side, it will still be built of finite information and resources. This will limit its monopolistic potential and force it to rely on others, just like people, nations, and companies. Destructive AI will encounter competing AI. Then, for every AI terrorist, there'll be thousands on the hunt for them. Governments will wield some of these, and they will also take preemptive measures. You talk to the, the various players in the uh, AI industry and say, okay, what does everyone agree would be fair rules, just like you would for a sport? Um, and then you figure out a way to implement the, the rules that everyone generally agrees uh, are right. The US made a small start in 2023 by attempting to limit evasion of human control. Future regulation may involve treating some AI industries, such as chemical and automated weapons manufacture, like the pharmaceutical or medical businesses. Doctors hold great power over life and death, so they swear an oath and hold a license. AI practitioners may be required to do the same, and could be incentivized by absolute accountability. 
Currently, we promote AI caution on a love thy neighbor model. Institutions say, look at our research, please slow down, think of humanity. But love thy neighbor is a far weaker criminal deterrent than thou shalt not kill. And if you do, you get 25 to life. Treating programmers and their AI as the same legal person is tough, but it incentivizes foresight and removes their it got smart by itself, I didn't make it do that defense. Because everything AI does comes from us. Sound any robot action to its source and you arrive at human intention. The more complex the robot, the harder it is to see this, but we're always there. And humans, plus the intelligences we create, are destined to compete and cooperate and by virtue of both, survive. The purely destructive actors will always exist, but others' survival needs outcompete them, and intelligences play on in a world of many agents, differing goals, and finite resources. In the end, after all evil was released, what remained in Pandora's box was hope.